once again it's on it's the sl digital media podcast we dropping bombs tonight nothing but bombs and tonight we got a special guest publicist marissa mj savino south jersey jersey finest let me get that right but she has been in the game for quite some time. She remembers when they actually used to sell music. And now they call it streams and I don't understand it. You got to get a million streams for 50 cent. I don't know what's going on with this mess out here. So, Marissa, it's on you. Take us on the journey. Tell everybody um, who do you publish this for and take us on the journey of how you got to that point because this is a celebration of your career that's so dope first and foremost definitely thank you for having me i truly appreciate it definitely yes yes it. let's let's dive right on in let's go Let, let's go take them on the journey all right the journey of how I became a publicist how you got started what made you get started, you know, because it's obvious some type of switch hit uh, right. that actually made you want to actually do it because, you know, you could have did something else, you know. Uh, but it's obvious music was something that you wanted to happen for yourself. Let's just go into that. Well, you know, before I went into MJ's Hip Hop Connects full time, I was a social worker for about 15 years. Um but music and writing have always been a part of my life. Um, I'm a writer myself. I've been a published poet since I was nine. So again, music and writing have always go, you know, gone hand in hand for myself. Um, after 15 years of social work, of just kind of being burnt out of that field, um, you know, someone, a couple of people actually kind of put a bug on my ear and said, hey, you know, you should really just kind of go out there on a limb of faith and, you know, kind of do your own business, your own thing with the music thing. You've been writing on the blogs and the scene for a while. You've been doing interviews on artists and celebrity artists. So just jump in and do it. And, you know, it took me a minute to kind of digest all that. Um, and then that's exactly what I did. That's, I figured, you know, um, but at the same time, you probably got to explain what made you really want to do it? It's obvious music was a motivation. Um, what really made you really do it? Like, it, it had to have been like some type of revelation of, <laughs> of something. Or you just I loved for, music from the gate. Well, I mean, that's part of it. I mean, when you grow up with such a passion and just, you know, music is in you, it's your life, it's what you do, it's what you, you know, you breathe, it's just, it's you, of course, that passion is going to be there and you're going to want to pursue it some other way. Um, again, I was in social work for 15 years. Um, after that, you know, just doing writing and stuff like that, just having people come back to me telling me how grateful they were um, because of an interview I did or blogs I did or whatever. Um, it helped, you know, people um, get to know them better as an artist and get to know their music a little better. So I think for that, that's what did it for me. I really wanted to get um, indie artists out there so people can get to know who they are, get to know their music, help them build a fan base. Um, for me, I think that that really did it. And being part of, um, it's kind of like social work, but being part of working with an up and coming artist who really, for some artists, have absolutely nothing, no groundwork, no legwork or anything. And you're being part of that process of helping to build them up um, so they can perfect their craft. That's really rewarding. And for me, I think that's really what it was. I figured that. Um, but, you know, let's talk about some of these clients that you have. Um, I saw a couple on there, but I like to, you know, let the uh, people, you know, um, you know, basically tell it themselves. So let's talk right. about a couple of them. And, you know, how are they, you know, uh, to work with, you know, because, you know, right. I know that's work, too. <laughs> well, I could tell you that my roster kind of varies um, month to month. I do have a handful of artists that, you know, I'm with kind of like for the long haul. Um, so again, my, my roster varies. I have a couple of young artists on there that are more towards um, 
the trap side of hip hop. I have a lot of seasoned and established artists that I work with. I have some artists that are strictly just, you know, boom bap and lyricism and storytelling. Um, I have a variety of artists and I appreciate each of them for different reasons. Um, and I, and I also appreciate them because the young ones that I do work with, they are willing to listen. They are willing to take advice and they are willing to take guidance. Um, I will say this, not all money is good money. I have turned down a lot of artists because they didn't want to do the artist development. They kind of wanted to skip that yeah. part of it. <laughs> they just wanted to jump into the streams and the money and get me on Sway and get me on Hot 97. And, you know, they didn't want to do, you know, anything in between to get to that point. Um, so I won't waste my time with that. If you're not willing, you know, to put the work in and take the advice and guidance, then I'm not going to waste my time. Yeah, that is a waste of time. You know, you definitely. Know, you talking about sway and all the <laughs> right. You know, Meaning, you got to get your, you got to get it up. One single out and one video out, and you want to go on sway and hot ninety seven, and you want to go on tour, and you want to do all these things. It's like pump the brakes. There's a lot of other work that needs to a lot of other work <laughs> that needs to happen way before we get there. Um, and again, some artists are really um, just so eager and hungry to get to that point. You know, they forget that there's work to get there. And some are kind of like, all right, I needed to take that humble pie pill. And they'll they'll slowly climb up that ladder and they'll take the artist development and they'll take the advice, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, I figured that. And because another another reason, too, is you can't tell who's selling music they just keep talking about streams and you know right. and, I, and i and i know what the numbers are for like a million streams i mean it's really not that much compared no, to it what it was back in the day but back in the day of course it was a physical copy uh right. used to go and um and do and it's just totally different now so um right. what do you think about that evolution now because to me you really can't tell who's selling right i think um you know how the years progressed and everything that's happened with technology it's 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 a whole new world um you know the whole idea of streams and everything like that and and instagram and everyone having a following and a fan base and all everyone's focused on numbers and numbers and streams and streams unfortunately is because that's what the booking agents look for. So to book you for a show and to book you for a tour, honestly, they don't care how your music sounds. They wanna know how your streams are doing and they wanna know how, um, you know, how many followers you have. That will help them make the decision if they're gonna book you for a show or a tour. So that's why artists are so focused on the streams and the numbers and everything like that. Um, you know, back then in our generation, everything was, you know, boots on the ground and work there was a street team hanging posters hanging stickers you know all that stuff um going to the clubs and actually introducing yourself to the dj um all that footwork is not present now <clears throat> everyone is just so focused on numbers and they're losing you know originality and content originality and production because they're so focused on that part of the business and that part of the music that you know fans are losing out on hearing good music <laughs> you definitely uh especially now because um to me the music I, I don't say that it's bad i just say that it's um it's just not at a level of right. being great um, whereas though we, we came from an era where, of course, the East Coast and even down south and I mean, even down south had them back in the right. day, you know, um, I mean, you had the Master P's. They, they produced some great party records yeah. um, early 2000. You know, I remember Silk the Shocker. I mean, Silk the Shocker and uh, Maya has one of the best songs that they still play, you know, so it yeah. was hip hop and R&B. It was, it was integrated. It was great. Um, I mean, now to me, with, with the exceptions of the the J. Coles and um, who's the guy from Cali, um, Kendrick Lamar, I think yeah. they the only ones to me, in my opinion, 
represent that era. Right. You know, uh, right. the new era, which, like I said, it, it's just different music. Um, I, I, you know, it's a head nodder, you know. But um, right. the difference was the lyrical content was a lot more easier to understand, too. Absolutely. So, uh, you know, but but that's not to take anything from them, because guess what? Down right. South really went in heavy, uh, especially, you know, it was Master P and then it was the Hot Boys. Um, and and both did incredibly great um, at yes. their at their times. And guess what? They sold records too. Just to, yes. that's why I'm saying that. So shout out to them for selling some damn records and not no damn streams. Yes. You know. Yes. yes. Out of the down south artists, though, um, who do you like? Oh wow. Um, I don't know. You know, I don't. I don't. I don't know if I can say I'm really a down south. Um, fan of music i'm kind of like the just new york head you know i just like that boom bap that gritty new york hip hop. okay so shit. new york okay so that means we're gonna jump into the locks <laughs> the locks and dip set who just had a Here you know <laughs> a versus you know uh jada kiss was really sharp that day I didn't see the I didn't see the verses. I gotta tell you, I gotta be honest. I haven't seen any verses yet. I haven't. I really haven't had an interest in watching any of them, to be honest, since they first started when you know COVID broke out. Um, but this one definitely has been the talk of the town everywhere. I mean, left, right, up, down, everywhere. Everybody's been talking about it. Well, you know what it was though. It was uh, heavyweight rap groups. That's what it was. It was heavy. Yeah, of course. And it, it, it fell in at the right time, too. You know, uh, right. you know, versus to me is really getting better to me personally. Now that they're okay. doing the performances and, and stuff like that. And I, I mean, and what they did on that one, though, was very historical. They even had the guy who uh, do the boxing matches out there. That was hot. You know, yes. um, <laughs> him heard. coming out there and, 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 and uh, you know, I. You know, I, I tune in to Fat Joe, his show and everything. And what I noticed on even Fat Joe's show, he was like, he was surprised the dude came up to him. And actually, he called him Joey Crack. <laughs> 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 yeah, so that, I mean, come on now. That dude, you know, he he real yes. white, too. You know, that, yeah. <laughs> his hair always on oh, the icy, you know. So I was like, man, that that goes to show you, though. How big uh, hip hop it's actually um, evolved over the years. Just when you thought someone like that, which was probably never even paid attention, you know, we probably thought he was doing rock right. music or something like that, or or country, right. you know, he could be into that. Hey, look, he he wrote it up with Fat Joe, <laughs> called him Joey Crack. That's pretty hip right there, you know. So yeah, that is that's classic. Uh, <laughs> out, out of the artists that you have right now. Um, mm -hmm. Uh, the veteran artists. Uh, let's talk about that. Um, who are the okay. veteran artists? You know, the legends that you have. Because if they got through the eighties and nineties, I don't care who they are. They are considered legends to me. Of course, absolutely. Um, well, definitely, we'll start with Billy Dance. Um, definitely, Billy my Dance. MOP. I love working with. Oh, him. MOP. Yes. Annie up. Okay. Yes. You know what's funny about working with Billy Dance is. Everyone just is so used to his um, his like monster beastly persona yeah, on stage. Yeah, you know, on stage. But when you talk to him, like when he does interviews and things like that, he's just really very soft spoken, just very down to earth. And it's almost like when I set up interviews for him, a lot of the hosts are kind of intimidated, like, oh my God, we got Billy Dan's. And then when they speak to him, they're like, oh my God, MJ, he's like a big teddy bear. <laughs> So um, I enjoy working with him, especially because he's one of the legends who is really taking um, a stand and really has a mission on bridging the, uh, bridging the gap um, in old, you know, old hip hop and new hip hop, you know, building that, that generational gap. Um, so a lot of his new music is still that MOP feel, but he's introducing a lot of like, you know, newer sounds. Um, and things like that so the newer generation can kind of embrace it too 
um <clears throat> so he's his new album is actually um it, it's really a dope album the listening session i don't know if you're familiar with it it came out um last year maybe even this year um but definitely definitely hardcore but again it's something that the younger generation can listen to and embrace as well because it's got a lot of new sounds and things going on in there um so i enjoy working with him on that bridging that generational gap um then there's mc mc shan i love working with mc shan he is a fucking character M C Shan. yeah i be checking him out yo he goes all the way in but you know what though he had you know i i I look at some rappers who had distinctive voices yes he i don't think nobody ever had his voice you know not even try to mimic it or whatever mc shan yeah the bridge right yeah Yep, yep. yep. He's the, a character. I'll get him on your show. You'll see. He yo, is a MC Shan is something <laughs> serious, man. I tell you. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I like. I, you know, on. I like this music. You know. Now, now yeah. you're going back into hip hop. Eighties. Yeah. Yeah. You going? 80s, you yep. digging now? You in the crib? Yeah. 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 Oh yeah. You're, yeah. You're and, and you know what? Here's the funny part. I was a DJ for a long time, so okay. we really had vinyl. Vinyl. Me and my man. Um, DJ Milky uh, at the time he was Thurl D. He had two different names uh, at the time. <laughs> uh, yeah, but but we were vinyl people. We used to go downtown, and uh, we also was in record clubs. And I used right. to get a lot of music, you know, on vinyl. And it's it, it's nothing like playing it on vinyl. It really isn't. It was even an excitement to that. They took that all, all away. But I'm putting something together again. Where I'm up, kind of focused more on R and B. I'm going to do right. some rap, but I'm gonna take it back. But I'm actually a show. I'm a singer. So I think you know that from yes. some of the little <laughs> snippets. But there's an actual show to what I can actually do, which okay. is to integrate that. And I know the guy Cassidy is out there. I know he's out there. But I'm trying to tell you, I could take it to the next level. And we won't just be passing the mic. I'm, I'm actually going to be singing a little bit. But but you know what? Big shout out to him because, you know, yeah. you know, he it, it's working for him. You know, right. I ain't got nothing. But I had envisioned this years ago about this. And in fact, a lot of people didn't know AEG Live Nation knew about right. the project. So um, I was almost overseas. Uh, it's yeah. It was a ten city. That's where to be. <laughs> you, you, well, I knew that. You know, I, I, I knew that. You know, I mean, there's no. You're not gonna make nothing compared to what they making over there. They you're making right, some absolutely. money. Yeah. But I'll talk to you about that because when I tell you it was right there, it was right mm-hmm. there. And the idea that I that I've been pushing. When I saw the guy Cassidy, I was like. That's what I did because I still know wow. something was left on the plate right. that I knew about. And now I do my little jingles and stuff like that. I, they don't even know. I'm doing that on my phone. That's not even in the studio. Oh, wow. So everything you heard was on my phone. Wow. I just know how to work the phone. So, <laughs> yeah, I'm a phone guy. But... You know I can go to the studio and do it. You know, it's right, that's that's course. not really hard. But anyway, back to a couple more of these legends. In fact, I got a couple coming. Um, I'm starting something new with, with a new crew. They got some nice little um, people they can put their hands on. So I'll nice. keep you posted with that. And they know a lot yeah, of legends and stuff like that. All right. So let's talk about some more uh, legendary okay, so got, publicists. Got we got um, MC Shan. We have Cassidy. We have Doodlebug from Cassidy. Uh, Bo- you talking about yeah. Bars is back? Bars is back. See, I told you I'm on this stuff. <laughs> In fact, let me tell you something. Back. When Cassidy, I got a, I got a YouTube right. When Cassidy was on there, I did a one little thing, and I was talking about 
uh, the battle rap stuff. You know how he likes to talk about the battle rap stuff. So you know well, I know what I'm it. talking about. So right. I, I do pay attention because um, he, 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 he hangs out. Uh, well, he, they be at his crib and um, right. they're always, um, uh, you know, doing music and talking mm-hmm. and all that. Uh, but I did do one thing one time and it got uh, quite a few views and I think he got some, something out of that because I was talking about, you know, all the, the annex and all that stuff too. Right. I was like, you know what? We got to start going back to the lyrics because it gets lost because when you, yeah. like, like he said, when you write it down, what they said a lot of times, guess what? It's not. It, it lyrically it, it don't really be all that incredible but exactly. the way they doing it is you know it's incredible though you know right they, you know i know about smack white and brr, brr, i know about all that stuff you know <laughs> so i i stay in tune with the hip-hop um era and um when they did come here i did slide down to uh I think that's when um, Cassidy took on um, Arsonist. Arsenal. Yes. I was yep. I was down there for a second. I went. I didn't go okay. in, but I was down right. there and I saw Beasley and all them guys down there. I spoke to yeah. one of them. Yeah. They yeah, know I was yeah. coming though. Um, but um, I would be very interested to actually talk to uh, probably Smack. Smack is probably the most animated one. Beasley's right. gonna lay back, but Smack is actually um he's very animated. And you know, he he took he did this from the from the muscle too. You know yeah. what I mean? He came from the ground up. And you know, I think they doing something. What was the name of the uh app they got? Um they they on an app. Uh I think talking about um the goat something. Talking no. about the goat thing that he just did. No, you no. Uh, Smack and them is on. Uh, they on something. I forgot what it was. But the point is, I do pay attention to battle rap. I paid attention to. I pay attention to a lot of the the throwback uh, artists, whether it was R and B or right. rap. You know. Uh, but like you said, MC Shan was definitely the bridge. Was one of the hottest. Yeah. You know, uh, he's, songs he's out there. Cassidy is also a great interview. Um, he has jewels after jewels after jewels. He's very intelligent. Um, one thing about Cassidy that that uh, he definitely takes pride in is that he works with so many up and coming new artists, whether it's yeah. production, whether it's collaborating with them, getting them into the studio, teaching them, do a little artist development. He does all of that stuff with artists too, mm-hmm. um, because his big thing is, you know lyrics what happened to them bars what happened to them it's you know it's not here anymore um so so he he works really hard to kind of like teaching you know the fundamentals to the up-and-coming um artists and they take it in because it's coming from him it's coming from cassidy so of course they're going to sit there and take notes on that um versus you know someone like me saying hey you know this is what you need to do hearing it and seeing it coming from cassidy and getting critiqued from that you know from cassidy um, definitely spark something in them. <clears throat> um, also, his marketing guy. is incredible. I mean, he's the best. Yeah, yeah, he's he, he's, he's, the best he's dropped that. a lot of new music um, over the past year. He's dropped over about I want to say three different projects. So many singles, so many collabs. It's just every time you blink your eye, he's got a new track out. And they're all. Oh different. yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I pay attention. I, I, I'm telling you, I'm on the battle rap stuff, and I go on his pay. <laughs> I know they all be at his crib and all that stuff. You know. Um, yeah, uh, chilling in <laughs> I did meet one of. I, I I did meet one of the other ones um, from out of Philly. Uh, what was his name? Uh, Reed Dollars. Oh yeah. Yeah, I, I I used to see Reed at the studio. Um, okay. I didn't see him that much, but I did see right. him a couple times because I went in there and did some vocals with a, right. a rapper named um, Quiet Storm at the time. And, and in fact, the, the, the music did come out. Um, I think CBS, um, he had it on CBS Networks and stuff like that. Yeah. It was called Top Model. Um, so, I, like I said, I've been, I've been doing music. I, I know about, you know, uh, as far as putting it out there and... And, and putting it in play and and then from there right. you know you gotta uh 
you got to work it after that. Right. Yeah, he's still doing a lot. He's still got a lot going on. Yeah. You know, one of the things that I really, really enjoy, too, that I want to say working with the pioneers and the legends of hip hop is that a lot of the a lot of the newer cats that come into the game think that, oh, you know, they're in their 40s, they're in their 50s, they need to hang their hat up. And and now they want to come back out and, and work and do this. But my thing is they really never left. I mean, if you look at groups like Onyx, they never stopped making music. They never stopped touring. They've just been overseas doing it all. Yeah. Same thing with, you know, same thing with Lords of Underground. They never stopped. They never left. They've been touring. They've been making music. All the pioneers and legends have continued to make music. There's been, you know, not like long periods where they stopped. They just, you know, using their smarts and have been overseas making that money, making music. So again, it, they haven't left. They're still here. A lot of them are doing, if they're not doing music, they're doing other endeavors that are in the music you know, industry and entertainment industry, whether it's behind the scenes or whatever, but they really haven't gone anywhere. They're still full throttle. They're still putting hip hop in the forefront. And that's one of the things that I stress to a lot of the newcomers too, regardless of the lane that you choose in hip hop, because there's a lot of different lanes, just like we had, you know, when we were growing up, Mm -hmm. you need to know the history of hip hop and the culture and the elements. And that's it, period. Whether you're going to go and, you know, again, whatever lane you're going to choose, you still need to know the history. Be- because Period. I was a DJ, though, and I, I understood the vinyl era. I mean, it goes right. back to Run DMC when they yes. was. Yeah. When 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 it, remember it was brown and gold <laughs> label. Yeah, I remember that. So yes. um, it goes all the way back to that, because I think they. They were the ones that really took it uh, to the next level crossover. Because yeah. when they did the, they oh, did yeah, that one. Definitely. You know, that was the one that um, made people say, "Wow, look what they just did!" You know, because uh, we were still stuck on. But Run DMC had great timing. Yeah, like people don't understand their timing is impeccable. If right. you listen to those records, you could tell that they, you know, they were uniquely put together and yeah. both of them had great voices. Now, I'm going to tell yeah. you who had a great voice to me. Chuck D. Mm, I agree. He sounds like he could have been, you know, a reverend or something. Yeah, I was going to say that. <laughs> yes. Yes. Motivational speaker, all that. Definitely. I yeah. agree. I get chills when I hear him speak. Definitely. Yeah. And, Definitely. and I remember the era of public enemy. Now we're talking about LL Cool J. We're talking about Cool J had a song out. And I believe I still got that vinyl if I if I go find it. Wow. It's okay. in 1982 or 83 Def Jam Records. I can't live without my radio. Yeah, of course. <laughs> That was his first single, so you know I know I know what I'm talking about, you know. Of so, course. so I remember, and that was that was considered hardcore, yeah, back then, you know, because we were still doing Apache and jumping around and dancing and all that stuff during yeah. that time. That's um, when we were running to get all the all the D batteries for our boom boxes because we wanted to hear all that. <laughs> you had to run to the store and get the D batteries, the C batteries. <laughs> yeah, you 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 had to you had to run and get the D's and the C's and you had yep. the stupid radio that that the batteries ran out at like in a half yeah. an hour, but we thought yeah. we was doing something. Yeah, I remember yeah. that. I remember that. That's when <laughs> well, Adidas. You know, what, you know what? The vinyl is coming back. I do have to say that there's a lot of artists out there that are now adding vinyl to. Um, after they do the whole streams and everything like that, you know, maybe a couple of weeks later, they'll introduce the vinyl. Um, John Jiggs is big on vinyl. Snow Goons are big on vinyl. Um, a lot of artists are back into vinyl and CDs, too. I still collect CDs. I saw <clears throat> vinyl in Target. Yes. A couple of days ago. I mean, it was I mean, some that, classic albums, too. I would listen to, but I mean, you know, I haven't seen any hip hop vinyl. On no, Target. it was some. It, it was um the Fugees on there. Really? It was it was the score. It was in there. Okay. Yeah, they had the oh, score wow. and I'm um impressed. Yeah. You know who I wanted to talk about? In fact, I got his best friend is actually on my page. Guru. You remember him? Mm, of course. 
you know, I used to play a lot of his music back in the day, Dwick and, and all the other ones that he had. But Dwick was the banger. Um, right. Most of the time, um, I remember. I'm, you know, I'm gonna do. I'm starting naming some names of some groups. <laughs> I liked uh, Brand Nubian, Grand Nubian. Yes. Is it Grand? Is it brand, Grand or yeah. Brand? Is Brand Brand, brand yeah. Nubian? And I used to like Pooba, the Grand Pooba. Yes. He had the voice. He had that he voice did. with him. He you did know. Have the voice. Yeah. Um, uh, Black Sheep is probably one of the greatest it's clearly still one of the greatest greatest smash bangers between absolutely. that the show you can't you can always play those records absolutely and you know dress has um a new album coming out um produced all by uh jay dilla beats that um, jay dilla his, okay yeah that his mother jay dilla's mother actually reached out to him personally yeah. and said i want you specifically to do this project um, wow. So that's actually coming out um, hopefully this year. He's been working really hard on that. So we're really excited about that. <clears throat> okay. So, Jay Dilla, he just passed away, right? Uh, years ago. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Jay <laughs> Dilla, yeah. But he had a he had a, a, a major name. Rest in peace, Jay Dilla. But he was a major contributor to hip hop and music, period. Absolutely. Um, what about... Um, what about uh have did you ever meet anybody from Philly other than Cassidy? <laughs> no, I can't say that. I mean, not major ones or not legends. No. Um, okay. Definitely coming artists and, you know, established indie artists, but but no. Okay. I'm, I'm waiting to I'm waiting to meet Mr. Cheeks. That's my hip hop crush. I'm waiting Mr. to Mr. Che- oh yeah. Mr. Cheeks. Yeah, Mr. Cheeks. Yeah. <laughs> I knew somebody yeah. who actually knew him, but he passed away. But he used to tell me he used to call him all the time, though. You know, yeah, so yeah. yeah. But um, yeah, he he's definitely um one of the unique rappers. Oh, I got somebody. I'm a dig on this one. Poor oh. righteous teachers. Oh yes, definitely, definitely. Wise was his name. Wise intelligent. Yep. yep, wise, intelligent. I did meet him uh, in Philly. He did a show uh, probably going back like six six years ago. He did a show in Philly. Um, he's still doing his thing. He's got a lot of solo stuff going on. I met Wise. Um, it was a guy up in Jersey that was actually helping him put a project out. It was it was quite some time ago, right. but I did meet him. I was there when they shot their video. And it was up there in North Jersey somewhere. But I did meet okay. him one time. I did meet mm-hmm. him one time. And it was at that video shoot, though. So big shout out to Wise. Yeah, definitely. He's still doing- Poor, righteous teachers. <laughs> yeah. Definitely still doing his thing. All right. What do you got going on right now? So right now I am working on um, my radio show, which... Um, I actually did a radio show in Philly, um, UTM Radio. Um, okay. Yeah, that was some years back, too. So I'm looking to get that back up and running. Um, shout out to my UTM family. Um, without them, there there would be no MJ's Hip Hop Connects. That's that's where I had my start with pretty much everything. So a major shout out to them. Um, so working on my UTM, radio show. UTM, what does that stand for? Um, under the Middle. Under the Middle Radio. So strictly Under the Middle Radio. You heard it here. Yes. They just going to add me to it and bring it back. <laughs> yes. Shout out to Gunner G's and THE. That's, yeah. that's my family right there. Definitely. Yeah. Um, working at, well, I was planning on, um, you know, getting back into hosting events and, you know, doing media coverage. But now with this whole new yeah. COVID crap. Um, that's kind of put a hinder on some things because I'm not getting vaccinated and you need to show your um, vaccination card to a lot of, well, to every event now coming up in New York, um, even some outside events. So, For real? Yep. Yeah. Mm, when did that? Um, that's Kumo, right? Kumo did that, right? Yes. Okay. Yes. So now I got to just kind of steer to other I'm people. I'm a little CNN, too. I do check him out. You know, I'll be, yeah. be up a little bit. <laughs> so you know ain't too many people walk around. Yeah, you talking about Kumo? Yeah. 
So I got to yeah. steer lanes a little bit and maybe see, you know, what's popping in Jersey, what's popping in Philly. Um, but there was a lot of events I was looking forward to covering in New York. Um, Onyx was coming out to New York on the 20th um, for a show out there in the Bronx. I was looking forward to covering that, but unfortunately I can't now. Um, so just, you know, hosting, um, doing what I do, what, you know, as a publicist, um, working with MC Shan, we have some things coming up, getting him into the reality TV world. Oh, um, he's going to do well at that. Oh, you have no idea. <laughs> yeah, he, 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 look, he just letting it fly from here you on in. You have no idea. The things that we have lined up for him, it's going to be phenomenal. I'm really excited about that. Um, <laughs> working on some, on some stuff also with Billy Dan's. It's kind of outside of music. Um, so there's a lot of things going on. Um, Rampage as well. Rampage has so much stuff. Rampage going on. used to be in Philly a lot. <sighs> yes, he's in Arizona that. now, um, but he is all over the place right now. He's work. He's finishing up his solo album. Shout out to Rampage, that another one. Rampage. And you know, he, he was hot that's too. I remember brother. him. He was hot. Listen, that's my big brother, um, and he's finishing up on the Flip Mode album. They all came together to do. Oh, they coming back? Album. Flip Mode. Yeah, that album should be coming out this year, <clears throat> and everyone's on it. The whole gang is on there. Um, so he's doing that. His solo album. He has his own waterline that is doing phenomenal on the West Coast. Okay. Um, Big yeah. shout out to yeah. Rampage and his waterline. He's doing it real big, cleaning he's it up everything. too. He just became. Um, president for a new music label out in the west coast as well so he's doing everything that's my big brother and i i definitely love him to death um and we're excited for his solo project to come out and we're excited for the flip mode project to come out um it's going to be real dope real i figured dope. that well you know please bring them people back to me yeah so I, so i, I can definitely. ask because we're gonna have some fun with it anyway you know yeah. <laughs> Cause I'm really, I'm really one of those. They don't understand. I had the vinyl, man. I even had yes. flip mode vinyl, because I was a part of the record clubs, and that's the right. only way I was really getting it. I remember Rod Digger and uh, the yes. whole uh, flip mode, and I yes. remember they used to come with those unique um, album covers. So the beautiful thing about a, a lot of the uh, the conversations that I have, it's really going to be an organic conversation. Yeah. Based on whether it's hip hop, whether it's an R and B person from that era, you know, right. I don't care who it is. I'll be sure whoever, it, you know, I, I can take it there. It don't matter. Yeah. Um, and that's and it's all about confidence about this stuff too. So you know, you can't be uh, just on on the microphone and just you know being dead. This thing is about animation, right. even right. from this side, you know. So um, and that's the part that. You know, I can do that. And I can do that all day long. <laughs> yeah, that's me right there. Shout out to myself for, for being a little animated. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we're going to go back um, to, to you, you know, some more artists that you are uniquely attached to from the publicist, um, you know, job. So we're, who are we up to now? We said Billy Dan's. Um See Knowledge of Diggable Planets. He just dropped a solo project, um, The Caledelphian. Um, you know, a big Philly cat, and now he's on the West Coast living in Cali. Um, and Diggable Planets is back um, doing tours as well. They Diggable Planets, there you go. That's Philly. Yeah. One of them guys is Philly, right? That's Philly. Philly. Right? That is Philly. There it is. Um, they all came together in, in Philly. Um, but is, the girl, is the girl still around? Yeah, they're still touring. They actually just put a, a tour together for this year. Um, they were looking to do it last year, but again, because of COVID. Um, so they started that, you know, doing little tours here and there together as a group. And he has his solo album out as well. That's doing really well. Um, about to be on vinyl. I think it might already be on vinyl. If not, it's coming on to vinyl. They um, were a very unique TV. rap group, too. Absolutely. Yeah, Absolutely. they were unique at that time. In fact, they came out before the Fugees, right? <clears throat> I don't know if it was before cool like that. We the out like that. You know, I was remember that. Doom, 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 had the little. I think they were. I'm not mistaken. Before the Fujis or not. If not, they know. were like close. Yeah, neck and neck. Yeah. I'm yeah. not sure. But yeah, they, they brought a whole new spun to hip hop and, and it was incredible. 
and you know and see knowledge definitely still has that that unique sound in, in his solo work definitely that's 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 pretty cool you know um that you're still around these people these are the pioneers technically yes. uh other than that now you got to start talking about the kumo d's and you know the <laughs> father mc yo i look father mc had that one song I, he did with uh jodeci treat him right yes yeah jodeci was blowing on that joint right there yes. it was just you know, Father MC, it was Kumo D, uh, who else? Uh, Dougie Fresh, you know, Dougie that Fresh. that that song right there, you know, the, the, the show is just. A lot of uh, a lot of new music out, too. He has, I think, about like three new singles he just dropped. Yeah, who are you um, talking about right now? Father MC. Father okay. MC, okay. Yeah, he's, he, he's another one where he had a pretty about, decent voice. Yeah, he did. He, he's got a distinct voice, definitely. Yeah. Um, I also work with Special Ed. I enjoy working with him a lot. Okay, um, Special Ed. There you go. Yeah. I got it made. So, do, 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 do. Yes. Okay. <laughs> special Ed. Okay. He's doing, um, he's doing a lot of shows, a lot of performances. Um, he is working on new music. And he also... Um, wait, a minute, wait a minute. 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 I had to put that together. Yeah. Uh -oh. There was a guy that he has signed. He's from New York say. City. Yes, he has a couple of artists under his belt. No, no, no. He was on my show. Like I interviewed him. Who was um, I, I met him. I met him through Samantha. Uh, he just what it, had a show. He just had a show in New York. There you go. They yeah, was all there. It was Pen Game Classic and yes, all of them. Yes, okay. Yes, okay. Yes, that's, that's so. That's Certified artist. Nation. Yes. People. Yes. Okay. Yes. I I didn't never put that together. And then I was yep. like, wait a minute. You said Special Ed. I remember yes. he kept saying special ed that's and there artist. it is right there okay yeah that's his main artist he has a couple other artists under his belt that he's working with as well but that's his main one okay ryan dixon is his name on facebook i can't think of his name uh i can't think of his mc name but i know his name is ryan dixon we, we, we time to time we we be on here uh but you know i knew the whole little click i did i did the whole certified nation click yeah you know so big shout out to certified nation they got their own podcast too they are, they're doing it real big you know that's what they do you that's know what um do. that's what they do <laughs> um all right so any more oh my goodness um <laughs> you probably can just keep going on you know what who who did you meet that you you probably never thought you was going you just ran into them you, you well, know, you up near, near New York, funny, so you can actually, do it. Actually, um, when I was a social worker and during Hurricane Sandy, I was deployed by FEMA. Um, so we were out in Seaside Heights and we were rebuilding a um, playground for an elementary school. Um, and everything was funded and put together by Queen Latifah. So, okay, Queen Latifah, the queen. Yes. Okay. I would love to work with her. That's like on my bucket list. Okay. Um, <laughs> So Queen Latifah, she's done a lot too from an actor's standpoint. She's and yeah, she's done she a is lot. A true inspiration, whether you're a male, female, kid, or whatever, she's an absolute inspiration in every aspect. Um, so, she, like I said, she had funded it. It was, you know, her thing, um, her contribution. Um, so I went in there not thinking that we were going to actually meet her because it was really, we were hands in like cement and, and mulch and equipment, like really building up a playground. Um, <clears throat> and every time I thought I was going to meet her, I'm walking by with buckets of cement. We're passing each other and she's got, you know, equipment in her hand. And it's like, oh, you know, I'd really like to talk to you, but it just, you know, we're there for hours and hours, and it just, it never panned out. Um, City finally, the Great. That's his name. City the okay. Great. There you go. <laughs> so, I had to go on his page. So finally, I kind of, she took a moment where she was watching, um, these kids were, were painting a, a beautiful mural. So I kind of went over there, I talked to her for a little bit. Um, and then afterwards, I found my way to, um, <laughs> her uh her bus or tour bus or whatever um and i was talking to one of the security guards about you know kind of letting me in and you know just having like a one-on-one -on -one and doing an interview and he was going to let me in the tour bus but the other security guards in the tour bus like reamed him out left and right like you can't let anybody in here da -da -da -da. 
I felt wow. so bad. I almost, uh, he almost lost a job because he was going to let me go on the tour bus. Um, so I did get to meet her, but not really how I wanted, you know, to meet her. But at the end of the day, it was a beautiful event. Everyone came together. She had her Tim's on a t-shirt on. She was right in there with the mix of everybody building this playground back up. It really was a beautiful thing. So, you know, if I didn't get to meet her the way that I wanted to, just being in that atmosphere with her was really incredible. Absolutely. You know, um, I, I'm not really like a starstruck person because I've been an right. artist for years. And if I told a lot of people, like, even though I, I never, you know, did any music with them, they would be very surprised who I was actually next. I'm talking about like right next to. Right. And it was to me, it was it wasn't I wasn't never starstruck, but I met so many people. Right. Um, but I'm going to ask you, did you ever get starstruck? from one particular artist you'd be like oh my goodness that's such and such no no i think you know that's one of the things with me i myself too i've never been starstruck i mean at the end of the day we're all human we're all people um some people just happen to me more more in the spotlight than others um so i've never really been the oh my god da, 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 da. you know i've never really been like that um I will say though, the the first time I met C Knowledge, I was a little giddy. <laughs> you know C what I mean? Because like, okay. but, yeah, I was a little giddy when I met him because Diggle Planets for me that that was like I absolutely love them as a group yeah. and everything they you know that new spin they brought into hip hop. So for me, it was just incredible to sit down and and interview him, smoke with him, drink with him. It was just an incredible night at the radio station. So when I initially met him, I, I'd say I was a little giddy, but that was it. Yeah. I can't say I've been starstruck. I mean, who knows? It might happen. I don't know. I mean, like I said, I just ask because, you know, some people, they'll be like, I can't believe I was next to X, Y, Z. Right. Know, and no matter if they're the artist or not. Right. Yeah. People will say to me, like, MJ, do you realize the people you work with? I'm like, yeah, you know, they're cool. They're dope. They're like family now. I've been working, you know, with them for a while. They're like, but MJ, do you really just sit and think sometimes like, oh, shit, I'm working with MOP. I'm working with Onyx. I'm working with so-and-so. I'm like, I guess, but I don't know. Yo, Onyx, that uh, slam and it's time to get, wow, wow. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that one right there. I used to play that. I used to play it. It's funny. All of these artists that you're, you're naming at one point, you had to play it because I think of most of them had up tempo songs. Yeah. Even um, cool, cool like that. That was an up tempo song. Do, do, yep. do, 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 do. Yep. So um, I still remember a lot of things from a uh, beat per minute. I'm a beat per minute uh, okay. a DJ. So I understand the beats and. Right. And uh and stuff like that. And but like I said, it has to be I mean, to you it's regular. But right. all these names you just named, you can't even get those all them on one show. Right. <laughs> it, it, it you just rolling with it, you know. Um so I mean, big kudos to you for, you know, hanging in there doing the doing the real hip hop, you know, well, hip hop's Thank pioneers. Um Thank you. And I'm quite sure, you know, you've only just begun of course. Um, because these guys have had they have the real hits of hip hop. Yes, you know, they, they have, have the them. hits that you can listen to today and feel the exact same way when you did 10, 20, 30 years ago when you first hit play. The same yeah. exact feeling. That's what now, I love about. You know, this is what I wanted to ask. Did you ever meet Biggie? No, I didn't. Wow. No, I didn't. Hmm. I think that would have been a phenomenal interview. Yeah, I, I'm quite sure. Phenomenal. Yeah, Biggie Biggie Smalls, um, definitely. Uh, and I mean, him, Pac, all of them. You know, they, 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 they was at man. I think hip hop really was selling them. Yeah, without a doubt. Yeah, it was really, <laughs> and then the Fifty Cents came and. And, and right. you know, and he did a dime too. You know, he did ten million. People, people understand that. Uh, but if we take it way back, I believe uh, N.W.A. was really selling out the yeah. trunk. 
And they was like, wait a minute, we got to side them because they yeah. really coming out the <laughs> trunk with this stuff, you know. So. Literally. <laughs> Shout out to Ice Cube. Yeah. But I'm going to tell you, though, I used to really like MC Ren's voice. A lot of people say that. A lot I used to really like, that. you know, his voice. He was, and of course, uh, DOC before he, he yeah. messed up his throat, but he had, yeah. you know, I'm the diggy diggy dog. You know, he was, he, he was fire. He yeah. was definitely fire, you know. Shout out to NWA. Other, they were the hardcore pioneers of the West Absolutely. Coast. Um, shout out to them. Did you ever meet them? No, I didn't meet them either. Okay. You know, and you know, speaking of like distinct voices, I think that's also a big thing that's missing today. Everyone sounds the same, you know, when you're talking about the newer generation and, you know, what's playing now in hip hop. There's a lot of people that just kind of sound the same. Like, I miss those distinct voices. You know, kind of like that whole pack. For me, when I listen to music, it has to be the, the complete package. It has to be the content, you know, the lyrical content. It has to be the deliverance of the lyrical content. It has to flow with the production. The production has to be on point. Your voice has to be on point. Everything has to flow impeccably for me to be like, whoa. And it's just, it's it's hard to, not, I don't want to say it's hard to find nowadays because it is out there. It definitely is out there. It's just not presented as much as this trendy newer wave is presented. Oh, and yeah, I think definitely. Yeah, and I think a lot of that is because, you know, our generation of artists again everything was was footwork you know we actually did everything there was no technology we didn't do streams we didn't do hey here's a link to my album no you it had to sell you had yeah, to sell it was literally come to my trunk and here's a cd give me ten dollars give me twenty dollars selling t-shirts yeah. you know all that stuff um but uh, but i have to say that that hip-hop people that appreciate and embrace authentic hip hop. It really still is out there. The boom bop, the lyricist, the wordplay, the storytelling. You just have to know where to find it. <clears throat> but it yeah. definitely is out there. Even vinyl. Like I said earlier, there's a lot of vinyl out there. I would like to send uh, a rest in peace, condolences, Chucky Thompson. Yes. Chucky Thompson was a big big contributor to bad boy records p diddy his whole crew uh yes. rest in peace um i, I saw the um, article today um i was reluctantly to meet chucky thompson personally so i i actually met him before um right. in fact um we even met him up in new york city um knew one of his homies or whatever it was real tight with him um but um when i heard the news i was like wow I mean, that 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 kind of hit home because I, I knew him yeah. a little bit. You know, I hadn't talked yeah. to him in a while, but when he was calling me, he used to call me and uh, rest in peace because he is definitely a pioneer of great music. Rest yeah. in peace, Chucky Thompson. All right, so soon as you get your little squad together, I can't <laughs> wait. You know, yeah, bring them I on, and um, absolutely, I, yeah. Uh, it's gonna be a great conversation. Yeah. Um, you just gotta give me some, you know, uh, more history on them, like a little bio or something like that. Of course. Uh, cause right right now we did this. I was like, we just gonna talk, and um, <laughs> but usually I, I get bios from people, and um, right. you know, that's the best way to do it. So that way. You even know what, what state they from because you know just because they they became hip-hop in new york when they got signed some of them didn't come from new york you know some of them coming exactly. from different spots um but this was a great interview um thank you for having me yeah uh once again you know uh i want to thank you for coming out uh, you didn't have to get out this is a a, a de-covid uh way to doing yeah, it right. anyway so <laughs> This is the whatever best way works, to do it. Right? Yeah, here, whatever works. All right, so we're gonna um, end it right now and put all your information out there. I'm quite sure some people will hit you up. You're a publicist; they better hit you up. Yes, hit me you up. Know. You can um, hit me on 
uh, every social media platform, MJ's Hip Hop Connects with an EX. Um, that's on all social media platforms. My website is MJ's Hip Hop Connects.biz. Um, and you can also just Google me. You can find me that way as well. Absolutely. You heard it from here. Marissa Savino, MJ, <laughs> MJ. Connix. She's on her way out. Make yes. sure you, you know, uh, she, she left her information. If you're not serious, do not don't hit her up. up. Yeah. Don't hit me up. Don't waste your time. And, and you um, have to have a budget. Not lunch money. Not oh, lunch yeah. Money. You have budget. some money. Yeah, that might work. I do work. not work for free. Oh, no. Nobody does that. <laughs> All right. So th- that concludes this. Have some money. Sweet. <laughs> All right, then. We are out.